Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. We're going to start while I go through the back. <laughs> up, on, up on the screen there. Genesis Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasing to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she gave to her husband with her, and he ate. The fall. If you were here last week, you recall we preached on the creation. Last week I began a series. Beginning with the creation, today we're going to look at the fall. Next week, we'll be looking at the flood. And I tell you that to get you to understand that in the beginning, as we saw last week, God created the heavens and the earth with purpose, with a plan. And so, when we begin in Genesis 1 and verse 1, we need to understand that God is taking His creation somewhere. A few weeks ago, I read an article regarding the Milky Way, our galaxy. And the article says that the Milky Way, along with everything else, is actually moving through space. The bright boys of our day, the intelligentsia of our day, the bright astronomers of our day, they say we know that it is moving, but we have no idea where it's going. God moving. <laughs> Let me tell you where it's going. It's going right where God has directed it to go. Amen. In the beginning, God created it all and He set it on a journey. We are going somewhere. We're going from the very beginning to the very end. And so God determined a plan for His creation a plan for man which began in the Garden of Eden. We talked about last week the fact that man is actually at the forefront of God's plan. That man was created with intellect, emotion, and will. That man was created with dignity, nobility, and worth. My, my, how far has he fallen? Exactly. And so as you and I know it, time began in the Garden of Eden. Listen, God is timeless, folks. He had no beginning. He has no end. That's not true with you and I. Well, you and I had a beginning. And so time tells us that man is going somewhere. Do you understand that every 24 hours the earth makes a complete revolution? Yeah. With each passing hour, with each passing second, you can even watch a clock that has a second hand and you can watch each second of each moment Pass. We call that time. Mm -hmm. Time begins for each of us 
at the very moment that we are conceived. Generally, we spend some nine months in our mother's womb developing. That's time. Some may come a little early. Some may come a little late. But with time we come. And so we could say this morning that time takes us from the cradle to the grave and into eternity. Time is taking you and I towards eternity with each passing day. Second, we are moving towards God's eternal plan. That's where we're headed. And despite how things may look, things are right on schedule, just as God planned. God is moving His creation forward and nothing can stop time. The reality of it is God has been so good as to give us His plan from the very beginning to the very end. You don't have to go to the palm reader on the corner to hear about the future, folks. You don't have to get up every morning and turn to the astrology page in the Tribune of the Times to see into your future. Matter of fact, that's all a lie. We can read all about it from the beginning to the very end. Last week, we began our journey with creation. Today, we're going to move forward just as God's plan is moving forward. Today, we move from the creation to the fall. Today leads us into the fall of man as God moves His plan forward. Next week we will move to the flood and the week after that we'll move to the Tower of Babel. I want to get this point across to you this morning. Man is a fallen creature who resides in a fallen world. Man is a fallen creature residing or living in a fallen world. And the first thing we need to understand is this. Satan introduced man to death in the garden. Satan introduced man to death in the garden. And so as we go back to the beginning of time as we know it, we see that God creates the universe. He creates the heavens. He creates the earth. And He places little old man and little old lady in the perfect environment. The Garden of Eden. He supplies Adam and Eve with all they will ever need. They have it all. God would actually come down to the garden, walk with them, and talk with them. They lived in what you and I could only describe or imagine to be today paradise. But then one day into the garden walked the serpent. He didn't slither in like a snake that day. Most likely the serpent walked upright like you and I do. And so into the garden one day walks the serpent. 
possessed by Satan himself. The serpent again, most likely he walked upright in his original form, but then after the fall of man, there was a curse which was placed on the serpent for the role that he played in the fall. And from that day on, he slithered around in the dust on his belly. Now I tell you, I'm for one, folks, one of the things I don't like is a snake. <laughs> I mean, I got one living in my yard. He's a black snake that long, probably, and maybe that big around. And I know that black snakes are harmless. And I just let him go around his business. Now, if he's a rattlesnake, I'd kill him. I'll tell you that. If he's a poison snake, I'd kill him. But he's a harmless black snake. But even though I know he's harmless, I want nothing to do with him. Right. Like as long as he stays away from me, he's fine. The other day, I went out to get the garbage can, and I opened that fence gate, and oh, Lord, now he'd go right across from my feet. I'd dance like a Pentecostal. <laughs> He had my attention, I'm telling you. Yeah. Scared me to death. <coughs> I don't know what bothers me. I got two folks, rats and snakes. I don't know which one. I don't want to have anything to do with either one of them. <laughs> but we're told that a curse was placed upon the serpent by God because of the role that he played in the fall of man. Then we look at this old wily creature called Satan. He worked through the serpent. Now we discover in the Word of God that Satan is described, hear this now, he is described as an anointed cherub. I'm going to tell you something, folks. God anoints men and puts them in pulpits today. The opposite is true as well. Satan has some anointed messenger. <laughs> and so Satan is described then as an anointed cherub. Listen, he don't come to you with horns and a big pitchfork. No, Paul said he comes masquerading as an angel of light. He was perhaps the highest of all God's created beings. Earlier, before the creation of Adam and Eve, we're told that he rebelled against God. We're told that he had this disease. I call it the big eye disease. <laughs> that disease still around today, you know. Think about it. A single letter in the English vocabulary, that one letter I is one of the most common used letters alone by itself in the English vernacular. It can also be one of the most damning words. In the English. You see, it was Satan's downfall that's been man's downfall ever since. Listen to the description in Isaiah 14, verses 12 through 14. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how are you cut down to the ground, you who weakens 
the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the very stars of God. I will sit also on the mount of the congregation in the recesses of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. <laughs> Big eye disease, folks. It's what brought Satan down. Satan was in rebellion against God and he still is. And let me say this. He is a literal creature. He is a literal created being that actually exists. His problem was he wanted to be like God. He wanted to possess both heaven and earth. In other words, his desire was to rule in God's place. Over the heaven and over the earth. And to do so in order to fulfill his plan and his twisted thinking, he would also have to rule over humanity. Satan was seeking to actually replace God. The problem is there's only room for one God in this world. <clears throat> and so the result was we're told that over in Ezekiel we're told that Satan was cast out of heaven he was given the boot heaven was would, would no longer be his sphere of existence right. you say well what he's doing now well the Bible tells us that he's roaming to and fro throughout all the earth, seeking to destroy whom he can. But his ultimate defeat, we're told, has already been foretold and sealed. He is a doomed creature. From the beginning. And so Satan, through the serpent, we see that he made his way into the garden. You see, God has a plan. <clears throat> Satan has a plan to defeat God's plan. Satan's a loser. God's the winner, folks. Amen. And so he makes his way into the Garden of Eden and with great deception he approaches little old Eve. Christian words. You know, you ever heard about it knock on your door and they're soliciting something? You see, the Garden of Eden was Adam and Eve's home, and here comes Satan the solicitor. Yeah, <laughs> and what does he do? He solicits the occupants of the garden to disobey God. To eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And of course, Adam and Eve, they succumb. And they ate of that forbidden tree. And that very moment, folks, here we 
have the origination of every problem that every man, woman, and child has ever faced on this planet. Right. Right. It all goes right back to that one act of disobedience. You know what a snake produces? Little snakes. You know what a rat produces? Little rats. You know what a sinner produces? Little sinners. The origination of all of man's problems and all that man has suffered ever since that day in the garden can be traced right back to the garden to that act of disobedience in the garden. Satan introduced man to death in the garden. Man is a fallen creature who lives in a cursed world. The second thing I want us to see here is this. The result of Satan's work and man's participation was the curse. The result of Satan's work and man's participation was the curse. We read in Genesis, we discover that the serpent was cursed by God. Satan was cursed by God. And little old man was cursed on the very same day. The curse of the serpent would be that he would crawl on his belly from that day forth. The curse of Satan would be that he would receive a fatal wound on Golgotha as Christ hung on that cross, gave his life for the sins of the world. Satan suffered a fatal blow on the cross and at the second coming of Jesus Christ, we're told that Satan will be cast into a lake of fire. Praise God. His fate has been foretold. It's been sealed. Due to his own disobedience, man was likewise cursed by his Creator. Choice he made, yeah. And so man suffered a great loss in the garden that day. He lost control of the earth that had been given to him. Adam had been given the authority to manage the earth. The whole earth. To tend the garden. He lost it that day. He lost control of the earth. He lost control <coughs> over the rule that God had given to him. That rule, that authority was stolen by Satan, the thief. You know, Jesus told us what? He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And in that very moment, that man sinned, death entered into his world. Death. We can define death very simply by one word. It's separation. Separation. How is a child in its mother's womb nourished? In their little cord that runs from mom to the baby, 
And through that cord, that baby receives all the nourishment that it needs from its mother. Adam and Eve in the garden, they received all of their nourishment from God. They were tied to God. But when they sinned, that connection was broken. They were separated. And so physical death, we can define as a separation of man's soul from his physical body. Spiritual death we can define as separation of man's soul from God. Spiritual death was immediate. Spiritual death came to Adam and Eve immediately upon disobeying God. And then man began his great quest of trying to hide. You've been trying to hide from God ever since. Can't do it. Been trying to run from God just like Adam did ever since. Not only was his soul separated from God at that moment, at that moment the aging process of physical death began. You see, before the curse, death did not exist. Yet it's been the cause of all the problems of man. Mm -hmm. Every broken body.